I mean, this is the company that had Clippy, right? That would pop up to answer your questions. They they are out with a vengeance. The ones that are probably most threatened by this today is not companies like Google, probably is far more Salesforce. There's just no moat. My guess is that a lot of these companies have got maybe a month's lead. Google's got their own models, right? Supposedly they've got new models coming out in the not too distant future, right? So uh, as as we sort of see all these things happen, I, you know, it's going to be really interesting. My guess is that a lot of these companies have got maybe a month's lead. Definitely, to 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 totally agree. I, I just don't. So we we have to stop and recognize that. You know, so so while I think. We've we've been rec we've we've been looking at some of the great things Microsoft has done here and putting its best foot forward and moving quickly. There's just no moat around some of this stuff, right? Yes. Um, Salesforce was out there with Agent Force, you know, maybe we maybe we've overlooked some of the, the discrete applications that Salesforce is, was 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 offering with Agent Force. I think what what we're saying is that Microsoft has a play in that. Salesforce area of CRM, but it also has a play in power BI and analytics and the whole, you know, yeah. armies of people doing analytics that Salesforce doesn't. It has the productivity suite that is, is, is world leading. And so, so it's got this lead, but there's no moat around the agentic stuff and you just keep coming back and there's no moat even around the, the LLM. So yes, it's dependent on on OpenAI to, to, to some extent, but there's 1800 models sitting behind it. And I think you rightly pointed out that it's Phi models and it's it by depending or, or, or giving OpenAI the floor for the, for the lead model, it's spent all this time focusing on really good, discrete, fine tuned models, their own scratch models, uh, smaller models for the edge and giving them great focus. So, so while there's no moat, they certainly have a, a, a lead here. And that's where we're not seeing any cracks in the armor, right? So we, we looked at the earnings reports. I think it came out a couple of weeks ago. But what Microsoft is saying is they're gaining share, right? They're gaining share on the cloud, right, against AWS. And they're getting more, they're, this is what they're saying at least, they're gaining more customers from the AI in these applications. So, so far it seems to be working. But I think to your point, this is not a consumer mode, right? You know, so, so consumers are, you know, they... They can change from one day to the next, but this is what we're talking about: is enterprise companies that take months to make a decision on proofing whether there's a competing application they should use, or should they stick with the existing one? And we all know that it's so much easier to stick with the existing one than to take yeah. all the risks of, of of tearing it out, going with a new one that might actually not be better in in, in, in a significant way. So they have they do have that that timing, and Google has huge reach. Uh, with, with with its productivity suite, I think you know the the ones that are probably most threatened by this today is not companies like Google. Probably is far more Salesforce that they don't have the users that are you know there for the email already for all this sort of stuff already. Uh, you know, I guess they've gotten Slack, but like how much have they sort of put agents into that? I uh, you know the the. Uh, the Microsoft Teams product, the Google, uh, you know, Workspaces product, these are products that people use day in, day out for many hours of the day. And I think that, you know, as uh, on both sides, I think they're going to end up with very similar features in regards to agents. It's just going to be sort of like who gets there. I think, you know, before we leave the competitor set, you know, since we're t we've, t we've kind of taken a wide lens here and looked at all the competitors, I just wanted to throw out a few names, Sam. I mean, you've been looking at AWS just launched a, I don't know if you saw this, I think it was just yesterday, an, a multi-agent framework. Um, looks very similar to to the ones we've been seeing, right, for, for, on the research side from Microsoft, right, the Magentic One, um, Swarm. Um, but... I'll throw out some other names. Um, Langchain, you know, you know, you know, and Langgraph, right? In terms of what they're doing on agents, you've you've got OpenAI Swarm, which they say they're not necessarily supporting. But they've got something apparently coming. Was it next next year? You, you, right? Was it the orchestrator? You you've got uh, Crew, um, Nvidia with with NIMS, and I think Nvidia's. Yeah, you know, Nvidia's huge. It's I think the biggest company on the planet now because of the market cap produced by by the processor uh, craze, right? Because they're the ones that are building the processors behind all of this. 
So they're trying to work their way up the stack. And so they've got this NIM agentic framework, but their, their problem is they don't have the distribution with these, these apps, like we've been talking about with, with Microsoft, right? Hitting, hitting these, these users who are actually going to be using these, these applications. But any, any others, uh, any, any comments on, on any of those folks I just mentioned? All of those are, all, I think all of those are really interesting, right? You've got like, you know, I would say AWS falls into the sort of Google, Microsoft bucket of where they've got a lot of customers. If they can build agents that help those customers in some way straight away, they'll get a win out of it. Uh, you've got the sort of third party agentic frameworks like Langchain, Langgraph, uh, like Llama Index is another uh, good one. Crew AI you mentioned already. So these ones are much more sort of, uh, independent, so, you know, like people, developers themselves are sort of getting behind them, using them to create products. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of low code, no code agent startups come out. Uh, startups like Lindy, uh, like NAN, that are making these sort of, you know, drag and drop uh, agentic frameworks and stuff as well. I think they're the ones that are probably the under the most threat from things like, you know, Copilot. I, I, I can see that like, you know, if Copilot does sort of really cement itself as being one of the key things, and maybe, maybe Google has something like that as well, uh, it's going to be hard for the startups to get a foothold in there unless they've got something quite unique. Uh, and that, that's, you know, that's possible. Um, I think th th things like Langchain, uh, certainly they're they're basically going into organizations and helping organizations to be able to build uh, things themselves. So you will see that, you know, there are organizations that don't want to use the, the Microsoft way, don't want to use the Google way. They want to do it themselves. They've got coders already. Uh, they, they, you know, the, certainly Langchain has, has been a big proponent of, uh, you know, getting these tools into developers' hands. I think Crew AI has tried to simplify, you know, a lot of these things. Llama Index, again, sort of getting tools into developers' hands. Those uh, startups are doing really interesting stuff. The, the big thing is, you know, who's going to end up being the key users? Now, I think that they will be pretty fine. Like, I think there's definitely a market for developers who want to build these things themselves. And maybe they want to build stuff that Microsoft's not going to like, right? You know, that you could imagine that maybe Microsoft doesn't want you to being able to just extract information off LinkedIn, right? Uh, because they yeah. want to keep that there, right? So that's where, you know, perhaps some of these third-party tools actually do allow you to do things more of where you can do things, you know, that with your own data, you could scrape data, you can do, you know, a whole bunch of things like that. So I think, I think the, the, there are lots of different plays going on here. I think the big tech companies have got advantages uh, in many ways. Uh, one of the biggest advantages that they've got is they've been able to sit on the sidelines for a year, watch Langchain, watch Llama Index, watch Crew AI, see what those guys have done that have worked, what hasn't worked, what people in the communities have liked. And then they've also had the time to sort of think through the actual sort of UI and UX. And I think this is something that is, we're still very early days in, is like actually how are people going to want to make these agents? If, you know, if, if you want to make an agent at VentureBeat, I, how are you going to do it? And, and, you know, are you going to be using one of these off the shelf ones that you just say, oh, well, we could just use that, but we need to change it for this and this and this. Are you going to want something that, you know, checks all your articles that goes before they go out or something like that. Uh, and that's going to be maybe need, need to be something more custom than what's, what's out there. So yeah. you could imagine that there, that there is still a space for startups that can sort of build all the agents for a particular vertical. I think a classic example of that would be perhaps real estate. You could imagine that for something like real estate, you know, agents are going to want, you know, some sort of appointment setter, some kind of, you know, follow-up communication. And all of these things could be automated pretty well uh, so that they could just focus on taking meetings, showing people houses, that kind of thing. Uh, now, if, if a startup was to actually sort of get that and get it, in a way that agents just like, oh yeah, you totally understand me, then there's still a position for startups, right? I don't think it's 
you know, I don't think we should be writing off startups. It's just, it is interesting to see that Microsoft's definitely trying to take their knife out and come after startups at the moment. <laughs> And this is one of the things I like that, you know, you're in your interview with Charles, him talking about this agent mesh. And he actually even sort of mentioned that it's not all going to be Microsoft agents in the agent mesh. It's going to be other companies, agents interacting with the, the Microsoft agents. And I think that's going to be, yeah, the future. You know, you will sort of at some point have your own agents that, that sort of represent you and go off into the world and do different things. And they will encounter, you know, agents from lots of different uh, providers or, or uh, organizations, that kind of thing. You know, we're, we're still a way off that, but it's definitely starting to be a vision that people can see. You know, you know two, two things that, you know, come to mind that we haven't really touched on um, is the... Um, We've obviously touched on the pre-built applications, the 10 applications that Microsoft has put out there. Uh, the, there there's also these, these cases that they refer to like pets at home, right? Where the IT department of pets at home deploys a fraud prevention agent in, in, in less than two weeks with the tools that aren't, you know, it's, nothing's pre-built, but it's, it's using the agentic tools. And, and I haven't seen how exactly they've, they've done that. But McKinsey did something similar. They've got these case studies, right? McKinsey were able to take these, these projects coming in and these projects need to be sent to an, a particular employee or consultant within McKinsey to take care of. And, it, it, and it, they've created a solution that automatically routes it to the right employee or consultant based on their their interests and that that it took from 20 days to now two days using this agent right so there's this these these applications built from scratch but then i think what charles said is his, his personal favorite was the the personal agents now we're getting back to your your comment about google's play right and i think they call it pages um or or something where, where at microsoft there charles was saying when when he now shares a presentation or a docu document to his colleagues or to outsiders. It's actually an agent that is now sharing it. He builds an agent that, that goes ahead and shares it. So then you or I, if we're interacting with his documentation, it's through this agent where we can ask questions of the document. And then there's a chat feature that basically goes back and forth, which I, which I find fascinating. I, you know, this is one of the big things I've been talking about for a while is that all of this technology leads to sort of heavy, heavy personalization where the end user can basically get what they want when they want it. Uh, and I think this is like, you know, we went from the days of sort of cable TV to being having sort of on-demand TV where you could get that. I think that was sort of like a, a huge step in personalization. We're going to see the same thing even more where, uh, you know, people are going to be able to interact with any kind of data through one of these sort of RAG systems, through one of these agent systems. Uh, and at the same time, you could imagine that people could be listening to us speaking different languages, uh, you know, being able to interact with us and stuff like that. If, if, you're, if you get to the point where we're digitized, it's not that hard now for this technology to basically take everything we say and deliver it to someone who doesn't even speak English, right? That's a sort of huge step forward that all of this stuff is, is uh, sort of laying the, 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 framework for that going forward. Uh, I, I think, you know, we shouldn't be too sort of promoting Microsoft. Like there's definitely, you know, they're just the first one. I look at this as sort of, you know, okay, the, the, the era has properly arrived, right? Now everyone else will follow along with their stuff. Uh, now, you know, we'll start to see in more innovation from startups. We'll start to see a whole bunch of different things. And we've got this huge game of the next models to see, okay, how good are they? You know, some people are saying that, that everything's plateaued and that it's not going to you know, be good. Sam Altman and others are saying, no, 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 it's going to be good. Trust us. Let's see. So, you know, we'll see. We've still got, what, another five, six weeks of the year left. Let's see what's going to happen before yeah. the end of the year. You're absolutely right about you know, the caveat on Microsoft. I mean, let's let's face it; they should be ahead. 
if they were not ahead, they'd be in trouble, right? I mean, this is the yeah. company that had Clippy, right? That would pop up to answer your questions. They they are out with a vengeance. And you know, they've got the relationship. They paid for the relationship. They were very smart. They lucked out in this great relationship with OpenAI. Yeah. They have these applications, the, the, the biggest reach in productivity. It's just remarkable that as such a huge company, they've been able to execute as they have. So let's that you know, it's it's given them cre credit where credit's due. But I think as we talked about, no huge moat here, and so it'll be really interesting going forward. I, we're definitely going to see, you know, a, a lot of interesting stuff coming out. And this is the key thing with AI: is that every day that goes by, there's new things that are coming out.